let's make an easy and fun autumn themed envelope journal like this one. Hello, it's Barbara. Let me show you a peek inside this journal. So it opens once like this. We have a flap here with some ephemera. We have a pocket here with some more ephemera. Then this opens up. This here is a pocket. Sorry, you couldn't see that. So this here is a pocket. And this here is also a pocket. Then this here flips up. And this here is a pocket as well. Sorry, <laughs> this is too large. Then we have a journal signature here. And we have a pocket here with another card for journaling. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club and I have used the kit called Woodland Tales. And the construction of this envelope was inspired by G. Kerr. So thank you for that. And I will link G's channel for you below. So if you want to see how I made this, just keep on watching. The Digital Collage Club is a membership-based website with thousands of royalty-free digital collage sheets, vintage graphics, scrapbooking, card making, and digital craft supplies. You get instant access and all images are created especially for this club. Each week new images are added and you can sell whatever craft items you create with these images and there are no download limits. So here you see the Woodland Tales kit that I used. You can get either an annual or a lifetime access and with my links and coupon codes below you will get discounts for these memberships. There are also quite a few tutorials. Here's one that I did with the autumn themed snippet rolls, but there's also tons of other tutorials from other very talented crafters, like this one here, how to make a ribbon lace holder storage box. How adorable is that? To start out, I'm going to be using two smaller envelopes and one larger envelopes. The sizes I have here for the smaller envelopes is what we in Europe call a five which measures approximately 22.6 centimeters by 16 centimeters or in inches, nine inches by six and a quarter inches, roughly. So two of those. And the A4 is approximately 32 centimeters by 22 and a half or in inches, roughly 12 and a half by eight and three quarter inches. If you can't get these sizes, in North America or other parts of this world, <laughs> use whatever size you can get. Just combine a large envelope and a smaller ones. Ideally, the small ones are half the size of the large ones so that we can easily work with these to have like one is half of this. But if you don't, you can work around it by cutting down the larger envelopes as well. I have also printed out the Woodland Tales journal kit from Digital Collage Club. So I have printed some, not all of them, but some of the journal pages back to back, borderless. So this will make it very easy then to assemble the journal itself. That will go in here. So there are more pages to this than I have here, but I figure for an envelope journal like this, this is gonna be enough, especially because I'm planning on combining it with some coffee dyed papers as well as may maybe some other papers. And I've also already pre-cut and even folded the ephemera from that kit. I love this box. Yeah, so everything is ready to go. As you probably can see, I have coffee dyed my envelopes. This is not a prerequisite. You can do this with white envelopes. We can just ink around the edges later, or you can also use 
maybe some craft envelopes or whatever you might have on hand. But I just liked coffee dyeing mine because I love the color. We will be seeing it around the borders a little bit. I'm going to be starting off with one of the two smaller envelopes and I'm going to be trimming off the top with the flap and I will be trimming it off so that this curve here also disappears. So I'll be trimming it right where this front part here stops or starts. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do this with my paper trimmer because that's the easiest. So now I have a pocket like this and I will be adding a half circle. I have a one and a half circle punch, a one and a half inch circle punch or 3.8 centimeters. Use what you have. If you don't have a circle punch, then what you could do is take a glue bottle or some other bottle that you are happy th with the size of the circle and you just Put it on there and trace it with a pencil and then just cut it out manually so you don't absolutely need to have a punch so and conveniently it has the half point mark on both sides so i can go by that and i will actually do exactly a half circle and i will try to center this So this is step one. Step two, we're going to take the larger envelope, the A4, and I'm going to take off the tiniest bit of the whole length with the flap on the right. So I'm just going to cut along here, just a tiny, tiny sliver to open it up. You can do this with your scissors. Mine just about fits in here, not completely. So it's really just the tiniest sliver. Look, I'm only taking off this much just to open it up. So now this here is open and we're going to fold this in half. Just taking my bone folder to crease this well. And this part here on the left is going to be a top loading pocket. So again, I will be punching a hole in the middle of that. And with the second smaller envelope, this is going to be the part that flips up like this. If, if you have tape on the flap, then you can take it off now. And I'm going to take my glue, could have also taken liquid glue, and glue, put glue on the flap. And glue that right to the inside of the envelope. Like this, make sure it comes down like this so that you can still fold this over. And next we take the first small envelope where we cut the flap off. And this is going to be glued onto this flap of the larger envelope. So again, I'm just gonna take this paper off. And glue this right on. So this one folds down, this one folds in, and this will be the cover and folds like this. And we will be putting our journal signature right here in this place. And before we close this top part here, if you want to cover up this part and this part of the inside envelope, if that bothers you, then this would be the time to do it. So I'm going to do this by just gluing a pe another piece, a scrap piece of coffee dyed paper 
right into that. Again, I'm doing this with glue stick. And I'm coming all the way up to that edge to cover everything. Just leaving a tiny, tiny sliver so that it's better to fold. Like that. And I'll do the same over here. I will just place that right on up to the edge of the pocket. Like that. You could of course also put some pretty patterned paper behind it. And now we can close up this pocket. I'm going to be using tacky glue, which is in my art glitter glue bottle. <laughs> so I'm just going to run a bead of glue just along the top here. Be sure not to glue down this pocket. <laughs> So what we have now here is, we have this flap with a pocket up here. We have this flap with a pocket up here. We have this flap with a pocket here and a pocket here. Now it's time to decorate up the pages and I will start by choosing my image for the cover, which is going to be this. And I have some misprints <laughs> from when I started printing the journal. So this one here, I forgot to tell my printer to print borderless, so it is slightly smaller. And these here <laughs> are borderless, but I printed it wrong, so they're not both facing the same direction, if you see what I mean. <laughs> so I have three of these. Yep, I managed to do this three times. And for the cover, I think I'm, I'm going to use this image because I think it is absolutely lovely for a cover image. So I will just be cutting this out. Changed my mind, I'm going to be tearing it. I want the rough edges for this. I have already inked up the edges and I am again attaching, or I'm again gluing this down with my glue stick. And then I will continue decorating all of the other sides in here. And for decorating these pages that have the half circle here, I'm going to first place it here. It's gonna cover a very small part of the circle. So I'm going to try to do that. Actually, I should mark it because I want to center this. We'll try to do this. Yeah, and that worked. So now I have just a small bit of the circle there and that will match beautifully. <gasps> it's upside down, no! Phew, was able to save that. <laughs> For this middle one here, we need to do something a little different because of this weird shape here. We could have also, if you want to make your life easier, just before you glue this closed, just cut a straight line here instead of having this shape. But since we have the shape, I'm going to just slip this in here. And then I'm going to trace this shape with my pencil so that then I know where I need to tear it. And I'm tearing a little bit inside of that pencil mark I don't want it going all the way to the edge of the envelope. Mm -hmm. 
When you burnish your papers onto the envelope, be sure to always start from the middle and go outside in order to prevent a lot of creasing. And finally, we just need one for the back. Next, I've inked up all of the edges on the whole journal. So now it has a beautiful vintage look. Loving this. And now it's time to put in the signature. So this is gonna go right here. So now looking at my printouts, I then need to decide what I want on the front. So I'm just gonna start by folding all of these in half and then deciding on what order I want them to be in. This would be a cute front, I think. Oh, this would be a nice cover too, or front. Maybe I think I need to do this one for the front. <laughs> it's hard to pick. There's so many beautiful ones. I also love this one. You could just put a title on it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight here. I want to just make one signature. And given that I don't want this to be huge or very, very bulky, I think I might not even put any coffee dyed papers in between. You could obviously, or you could just print these one sided and have the other side coffee dyed. I, I, I could have maybe done that. But it is what it is now. So I'm just gonna put these into an order. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to, yeah, it doesn't matter. I like having this as my middle of the signature, so I will just move that. So that is my signature and I'm just realizing I need to ink up all the edges. I'm back and I have inked up everything and I have also torn the edges just on this side, not all the way around. And boy, that took me a minute. <laughs> that has got to be the most tedious part of this whole whole process but I must say I do love now how the edges look and how they're not all equal really like that so it's time to sew in the signature and we're going to use a very easy three hole pamphlet stitch for this let's make the holes in our signature so I just want to make sure these are nice and snug then I will clamp them so they don't move. You don't, you really don't have to be very precise when you just have one signature and three holes. It's not a big deal. I'm not even gonna measure. I'm just gonna eyeball this where the middle is, punch right through that. And then I'm going to eyeball approximately maybe an inch from the top. and an inch from the bottom. And now I will do the same thing in my spine here. I'm just gonna hold this where I want it to be. So I'm gonna center it. 
and then maybe I should clamp this to make sure it won't move. So I'll just clamp this onto my envelope like that. And then I'll go through the hole again and I'll just go through the spine of my envelope. Like that. And the second one. And the third one. And that way I can be sure that they all line up nicely. I have this seam binding in kind of a bluish green and I recently saw a video by G Kerr where she made a little booklet and she had a very interesting way of binding it. So I'm going to try this with this seam binding. I don't know if this is going to work or if it might be too big, but she I think measured six times the width of her journal because this is going to be our closure as well so let's let's just give this a try <laughs> was it the width or the height now i don't know maybe it was the height maybe let's do the height <laughs> just to be sure that it's not too short or should i do this one Actually, the brown one would be really nice with this cover. Okay, let me see if I have enough of this. Then I'll use the brown one instead. <laughs> okay. So that will work. I just think this this color is nicer with with the cover here and this is going to be our closure. I really love how she did that and she just used the three hole pamphlet stitch starting from the outside and leaving enough ribbon so let's just see if I can do this. So I need a needle that has a fairly wide or fairly long eye so hopefully I can get this through. So we start from the outside. Where's my signature? <laughs> we start from the outside middle hole, like that, and go through the signature. And this is a bit tricky because, of course, the seam binding is wider. not sure how much to leave <laughs> how, how long the end should be because there's one that wraps around okay i'll just leave it like that and see what how that turns out then i'll go in from the top back out try to make sure that the ribbon is not twisted too much Then we go down to the bottom hole, back inside. Again, I think we should make sure that this is not twisted too much. And then we go back out through the middle again. And ideally, we do it so that we come out on the other side of that middle ribbon. can take the needle off now. Okay, so if we close this, let's see, how do we bind this? So I think she made a knot here around the middle. I just before I do that, I just want to make sure that I have it on right. So I think one is wrapped around and then the top one just stays and then you make your Yep, that will work. So by coincidence, my measurements were right. Just want to make sure that it's really tight in the middle here. Okay, 
Now I will make a double knot around the spine. What a clever girl G is. I love this. So let's see what this would look like. So we have the journal in here, nice and snug. Beautiful. And then we close this down, we close this down. Or no. We first fold this in, then we close this and this and then the cover. And then let's wrap this around. So the back one goes around once. And the front one just ties it shut. And I will link this seam binding for you. I got this on an Etsy shirt at an Etsy shop. How cute is that? I love that. Gee, thank you so much. I doubt you'll see this video, but if you ever do, thank you so much for showing us this cool binding. Now I think it's time to think about what we could put in our large pocket. We have four of these, so there's one, two, three and four and I thought we could include more writing space. I printed out two more of those pages from the kit which I think I haven't used in my signature. These and these and I printed them at 120 percent so as you can see it has quite a border here because I want them to be able to easily fit into the pockets. So I think this size will work well. So I will cut all around these and cut them in half. I could have printed these also back to back, then I wouldn't have to worry about what to put on the back side. And I could have also printed it on heavier paper so that I wouldn't, yeah, so I wouldn't have to do anything with it except cut it out, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so we're going to have to work with this because I'm definitely not printing this again. So I picked out some scrapbook paper that I've had for a really long time. And I think these colors would work really well with the colors we have going on in this envelope journal. And this is not the heavy kind of cardstock. I don't know how, how thick this is, but it's, it's more the lighter kind, but I think it will be good enough for these journaling cards, let's call them. So let's start off by cutting these out so we know what size we're dealing with. So I have my four card pieces here and I think I'm going to use this beige one here for these two beige ones as a back as a back side. And for these two, I was thinking about this one because I really love this one. But I think I will keep that. Maybe I'll use that in the front for something else. And also, I think it's almost too dark to write on because I want this to be journaling space. So I think we can go with one of these two. Or I'll do one from this and one from this just to diversify it. So all I'm going to do is glue this on the back of this and then cut around it. And I'll do that for all four pieces. So the four cards are ready. I've also inked around the edges in the meantime. So these are the back sides. And I think the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna take them to my sewing machine and sew a border around each of them just because I think that adds a special touch. I have stitched all around all of the cards with a zigzag stitch. I used a black thread for this just because that was in the machine and I think it's a really nice contrast. If the black one wouldn't have been in there, I probably would have chosen a dark green one. But I'm, I'm happy with this. This is cute. This is upside down. <laughs> and now I think what would look nice and what would help with taking these in and out of our pockets is to add some tags up here to be able to pull them out better. 
and what I think will give it a nice soft touch would be to add some fabric tags. So I have here a jar of some scraps of upholstery fabric and I think this will work very well with the colors that we have here. So I'm going to choose maybe different ones that I think might work. These are actually perfect colors. Always good to have scraps like this on hand. <laughs> this one here seems perfect for one of the green ones. Just have to trim it down a little bit. So that's one. This is beautiful for one of these. Look for this, for example. What else? So we have these two left. This one would work. Could we use a yellow one or a golden one? That would also work. This is beautiful. Could either put it here or here. Yep, that would work. We just need another one for here. Or we use this one. I mean, this is now inside out because this is actually the right side, but I actually really like the brown and yellow of this, so maybe I'll just turn this around because it works really well with that butterfly. Yeah, I think I will do that. Lastly, what do we do with this one? Why not? Let's do that. I get my upholstery fabric from my local fabric store. And then I've, I've used some for like journal cover covers and stuff. And so that's how I end up with scraps like this. Now I just need to cut these down to the right sizes. This one might actually be okay the way it is. Yeah, this one's fine. I'm just going to cut the end with my pinking shears to stop it from fraying all too much. I mean, a little bit is good. So that one's okay. This one is too long and needs a zigzag edge. This one is very uneven. <laughs> this one actually has very cute frayed edge here, which I want to keep. And I just want to cut this edge to the zigzags. And finally, I will glue these on with my 3-in-1 glue. You can use Fabri-Tex or whatever strong glue you have. And I like just putting the glue on both ends, not on the whole thing, because I don't want it flat. Like that. You could of course also put this on first and then sew over it, but I, I think I prefer having the tag over the sewing. So I will do that for all four of these. So they're all on there now. And I also think that these backs are kind of plain. So I think it would be nice to have something cute on them as well. So I went through all the ephemera in the kit and I picked out these four. So two mushrooms and two owls. And I'm going to tear around them and then I'm just going to glue them onto the cards. As I was tearing these out and after I also inked them all up, I was thinking, who am I kidding? Like as if I'm just going to glue these down like this, like who am I? <laughs> of course I need to put scraps underneath, I need to somehow ground them. So I have here again my box of scraps and I will be tearing some pieces 
to just give them a little bit of a background. What was I thinking? <laughs> I've glued everything down now, so I think that's all it took. Two pieces underneath each focal point. I am using, or I used vintage papers. I have some of the text in German, some of it in French. I have some vintage music sheet. So these now I think are much better because they have something, just something to look at but still have enough space for journaling. So now we can add these to our pockets, yay. I don't think it really matters where we put what, but what we could do is we could stick, well, we have to decide, do we stick to the colors that we have here? So we could go with beige, beige, and then green, green or we do exactly the opposite and I'm kind of leaning towards doing exactly the opposite just to mix it up. So I'll put this green one in here and we'll leave the tab, the tab sticking out here like this. I'll put the other green one in here. Then we have this one which can go in here. This one actually might have been smarter to put the tab here. Oh well, need to plan this better. <laughs> but I'll put it in so that you can see the sewed edge, sewn edge. And then this one, I guess we'll put in upside down. <laughs> and we gotta stick this in all the way, otherwise it won't fold down. that. So this is what we have now. I think it would be fun if we have a little tuck spot here and I printed out the same page as I have here and I'm going to cut out this shape here. But I'm going to cut it so it's exactly the same size. I printed it borderless. And my thought was if I cut this out but not have it as wide, so I'll do it maybe like this, then I can glue it onto the other one and that could be a tuck spot. So I'm just going to cut this out. I cut it out, I inked it up, and I ran it through my sewing machine so that in the end it will look like it was stitched on. But now putting it here and seeing it like this, it makes me realize these two <laughs> next to each other might be a bit weird. So I think I'm going to cover this up with some other image. So if we check the ephemera, maybe we could do him or these or another owl maybe. We have the owl up here. No, that's too much owl. <laughs> big mushroom, that's too big. I love the fox. I need to find a way to include the fox. I'll try it with this one. Tear around him again. But I want to put him on something more sturdy because I don't want this to tear when we put things in and take things out of that tuck spot. But I should have done that before I tore around it. <laughs> 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, I printed this on a little thicker cardstock, I think like 160 GSM. If you just want to use copy paper, then you just glue this onto another piece of scrapbook paper or something, of course. There, so now we have that. I think that is much better. Is it? <laughs> I don't know, it's very close together. Well, you know what? I think actually this is going to kind of disappear because we're gonna be putting things in it. So I'm just gonna go with it now and just glue this side down. Don't overthink things. And I have already chosen some ephemera to go in here and I have backed all of these with some of the same scrapbook paper that we used for the large cards like this and I've also just stamped some images on the back so that there is some interest there but you could still write on them if you want to so these are just beautiful I love this one and this one I just added some twine to and there's this one and this one they can peek out like that so I think that's fun there's one more thing that bothers me a little bit and that is here <laughs> I have to be honest I'm not very keen on this frog I'm sorry little frog but no <laughs> so I have prepared this piece here to go over him so this was one of the ones that looked like this and I just cut the border off and made it smaller to fit this space so this is going to be a very simple tuck spot I don't want to be mean to frogs but I do prefer furry things <laughs> And I have already prepared some ephemera to go in here. So this was the ticket and I've backed it and inked it up. Then we have this cute fox tag that I've also backed and added a vintage photo dyed hole reinforcement and added a twine on the top. And then I made one of Tina's cute little pockets here. Actually, it's a coin envelope and I put inside one of these tags which is also backed and inked up so let's stick these in here like that obviously we could keep embellishing there is more room for more embellishments and there are plenty more in the kit to work with but for time's sake I'm gonna leave it here I think you get the idea and I think this is very fun. Love having the journal sewn in like this. Love having the cards, the beautiful cards in here for more journaling space. I really enjoy how this came out. I love the feel of it. I'm, I'm sorry you cannot feel all the lovely paper and the fabric. <laughs> Close it up. It's not that bulky. This would be nice to take on a little trip, maybe. Yeah, not bulky at all. Very, very handy and compact to take on a trip. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for letting me show you another version of an envelope journal. I think there is no end to things you can do with envelopes. They are super fun. So go check out the kit if you enjoyed these images. Otherwise, just use whatever images you already have on hand or whatever you want to add to your envelopes. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.